Hi ladies, welcome from a fun Christmas market. We are preparing for our Night at the Marketplace coming up November 1st, and our theme this year is Christmas around the world. We're gonna take fun elements of different Christmas markets with different types of food, uh, fellowship, an encouraging word from our global partner, Taylor Torna, worship, um, all the fun things. It's gonna be a great night together, and we would love for you to join us. Tickets for that are on sale now, and they're $20. The price will increase in just a few weeks, so make sure you get your tickets ahead of time. Nice little early bird discount for you. And then in addition to that, we have our holiday marketplace. That's November 1st and 2nd, so come shop. Um, and if you want to volunteer, we could really use your help. Cashiering, greeting, bagging, and just making the whole event a success. 20% uh, of all the sales from the vendors go straight to our global partners as Christmas presents. So it's a really easy way for you to um, help support our global partners and get some fun little things for yourself. Okay, let's begin the exam. You have to let me know if you can see these words clearly. How does this look for you? Blurry and out of focus. Hmm. How about this one? Still out of focus. Well, perhaps this is what you need. Welcome ladies, excited to dive right back into Galatians. Um, we hope that you've been encouraged um, by the past two weeks. I know we kind of did that swap, that switcheroo. We had Nicole going before the panel and all that good stuff, but nonetheless, we hope that you are being encouraged with what we are putting out. And so, um, yeah, she really kind of helped us set the, the backdrop, um, as you will, with a lunchroom drama and just helping us to understand what was going on in these verses. In addition to that, we had the panel that we wanted to offer. It was just an opportunity to kind of just hear various women from different walks of life, from different backgrounds, coming to the table and saying, here's how we're trying to live this out. These are the implications of how we're trying to live this uh, truth out. And so um, we hope that you're encouraged with that. Um, in addition to that, I really just um, loved how Nicole unpacked for us um, just the fears that we face because we talked about that. Some of the fears that we face in having these honest conversations about these things kind of makes us shrink back and not wanting to lean into those tensions. And Nicole did a phenomenal job, even in her first two points. She talked about how fear often causes us to compromise our faith in God's truth and how sometimes our choices can influence others either negatively or positively. And so again, she really helped us to, to understand how to flesh this out. And so going back to the conversation um, so that we can understand the context of these verses, Paul had to publicly call Peter out for removing himself, remember, from the Gentile Christians when certain Jewish Christians showed up to the lunchroom per se. Peter himself was free from the law of Moses, right? And yet he removed himself from the Gentile Christian's lunch table and his actions were not in step with the truth of the gospel. And so for these two verses today, we'll be focusing on um, the continuation of that confrontation from Paul to Peter and unpacking it a little bit more. So let's pray before we begin. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this time that we get to gather together. Lord, illuminate our hearts and our minds to understand the truthfulness of your word in these verses and help our hearts by your spirit to uh, keep in line with the truth of your gospel by your spirit. May we live lives that truly live in obedience to what you've done for us. Um, we love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So our main point today is this. Faith is the essential key that opens our eyes to the truth of justification. It helps us to recognize that while the law cannot justify anyone, Jesus offers justification to everyone who believes. And before we unpack these verses, I kind of want to just talk about a story to set the background for what I'm going to be teaching today. I want to tell you about a, a store that um, I have a love-hate relationship with. Now, before you beat me to the punch and you think it is Target, Target or Walmart, um, it is not because even though I go to those places and I walk out with stuff I did not like intend to have in my basket, like without fail, there's also another store um, that I go into there and I walk out with stuff that I did not plan to get and it happens every single time. Like for instance, I've gotten a 12 pack of 90 cent, 96 crescent rolls before or 128 ounce of ranch. Like why? Like, like who needs that much? Yes, I did that. That was me. And so I am talking about good old Sam's Club. 
I go in there and without fail, I come out with stuff that I did not need. But during COVID, I think a lot of stuff shifted for me because I, I used to not like to online shop, to be honest. I'm old school. I'm a tactile learner. I got to touch everything. I got to try clothes on. Like I can't just buy stuff online and be like, all right, I'm good. Like I need to try it on. Right. Well, COVID also shifted that for me because when the entire world was on lockdown, we all became content creators and crazy online shoppers. Yep. That's me too. So fast forward, when I started going back into the store shopping again, I remembered why I hated going into stores like Sam's Club and Costco. Like I'm like, oh, this is why, because then I start buying stuff that I don't need again. But Sam's Club changed the game for me. And let me put you up on that. Basically, let me let you in on some secrets. They started doing stuff on their app. And I, maybe this was new to everybody else. It was new to me, but they showed me how I can have my membership now <clears throat> on my app. So I'm going to show you right here. Um, let's see. I have my membership on my app. So I just boom, flash it to them. When I walk into the door, um, it shows my purchase history. Um, it shows like, I'm not gonna scroll everything through so you're not judging me or what I'm purchasing, but yep, I got some coffee uh, for my boo and some turkey. Uh, let's see, it also shows my Sam's cash that I'm, I'm accumulating. It shows my savings, uh, what I save each time I go in there. It literally shows so many things and everything happens right here. And so um, one day I was strolling through the aisles and this lady rolled up on me and was like, Hey, did you know that we have another feature that you can actually scan your items in your basket, pay for them and go through the express lane? And I was like, what in the world? And the first time she told me, you know, I'm leery. I'm the type of person, like, I don't trust anybody or anything initially. So I was like, this is a scam. No, thank you. And I just kept it moving. Well, the second time when I went there and I felt like I was in a rush, I'm like, I feel like I should try this. Right. And so I walked in there, got my items, and I was like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. I'm going to do it this time. I'm going to go through the express lane. Now, the express lane has like these electronic arrows on the floor, so you pass over them, and you head to the exit like everyone else after you scanned your items and paid for your stuff via the app. And again, I'm not going to lie. <clears throat> the first time I finally did this, um, I felt like I was going to be followed outside, just to be honest, because that has happened to me before. Um, but I felt like, how in the world can they tell like I truly paid for everything? Like I literally felt like I was stealing, even though I paid for everything on my app. Okay. So when I get out to the checkout line, everyone's showing them their, their physical receipts. I have my electronic receipt um, on my app. I'm not going to go through all that, but it's right here. I promise you. Um, I pull it out and um, I'm literally thinking like, okay, like, do I need to show them my driver's license, my social security number? Like, do I need to empty my pockets? Like, I'm literally sweating. I'm not even lying. I'm like thinking that this is like a scam and how can this be true? This is too good to be true. So I get up there and the lady, sweet old lady, she was like, scan a couple items in my um, basket, scan my receipt on my app. And she's like, okay, honey, you're good to go. And I'm like, wait, what? Like, so I even rolled out the door slow because I thought the detectors are going to go off, like no lie. And literally, I'm like, this is too good to be true. Like, how good is all of this? Like, I cannot only, cannot, I not only can I go in there and get through the express lane, but they even have an express lane in the cafe line, y'all. So if you don't want to wait in that crazy line that wraps around to the bathroom, you can literally do all that on your app. Okay. So. But this experience, all that to say, made me feel like how sometimes I view justification. Like, wait a minute, that's it? Like, how, how is this that good and I get all of this? I'm not guilty anymore? Is this too good to be true? Like, how can little old me deserve this new reality of life that I truly did not deserve, earn, or even work for? You see, my app not only gains me access into that store, it reminds me of my membership. And I can even shop early before everybody else. That's another feature. You can go an hour early before everybody else and have all these other benefits that I have because I'm accepted, I belong, I, have, I get exclusive access with all these extra benefits. In a greater way, my sisters, my app is like faith. Using it reminds me of the access I have because of Jesus Christ. When he declared me not guilty, he said, not only do you not belong to the world anymore, but you belong in my family. 
I have exclusive access to the throne room of heaven. He hears my prayers. And guess what? When I get done scanning all these items, I get that receipt. And that receipt is like what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross, reminding me that my sin debt is paid. It is cleared. And I no longer have to be afraid. I can walk in confidence knowing that I stand before a holy God and I belong to him because he paid it all. And guess what? I'm not treated like a stranger at the door. I am family. I belong. I am accepted. And believing all of this in faith allows me to live in a way that is pleasing to God. That is the gospel. <clears throat> Seems too good to be true. It's too easy. But why here is Paul driving this home again? Well, let's see what he says by reading Galatians 2, 15 through 16. It says, we ourselves are Jews by birth and not Gentile sinners. Yet we know that a person is not justified by works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. So we also have believed in Christ Jesus in order to be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. Because by the works of the law, guess what? No one will be justified. What is justification? Okay, Paul uses this word three times here in these two verses. So I want you to pause real quick, get your trusty highlighter out and highlight every time you see the word justification in these two verses. Um, but justification is this big word. And yes, we see it in scripture a lot. So we're going to talk about it just a little bit. And another question for us to consider as we get to unpack this, why does, does it say that the law does not declare us justified? What is the big deal about that? Um, before we get into that too, I also kind of want to share a couple of quotes that I love from uh, Martin Luther. He says, justification by faith alone is the doctrine upon which the church stands or falls. John Calvin says justification is the hinge upon which everything turns. This is an important doctrine for us, not only as believers to understand, but for the church to keep proclaiming because it is true. So let's define a couple of terms. To justify uh, means to be made right, to be made just. Um, so synonym, synonyms, I almost said cinnamon, did you catch that? Yeah. Synonyms are like basically being validated, vindicated, right? Justification is the state of being justified. In theological terms, to be declared innocent, to be declared guiltless, meaning to be acquit acquitted. Paul is continuing this conversation here and he's taking it here because he just got done publicly calling Peter out for making the Gentile Christians feel like they did not belong. Remember, by getting up and removing himself from the table, he made a distinction that was that there was something that was different and this was not pleasing to God. And I love how Nicole made us consider how those Gentile Christians must have felt, thinking they were all good, sitting with a big homie Peter, um, until certain Jews showed up. Imagine how they might have felt disgraced, not accepted, ashamed, thinking they were no longer good enough. And Peter removed himself from the presence from their presence and others followed. So here Paul is reminding them once again that justification being declared not guilty, being validated, vindicated by God did not come from their own works of the law and it surely did not come based off of their ethnicity. There is no distinction. The gospel reminds us that we're all sinners and we all need salvation. So let's read verses 15 real quick again. It says, we ourselves are Jews by birth and not Gentile sinners. Pause. Being ethnically Jewish does not mean that they were automatically deemed justified. And I love that in the letter to the Romans, Paul clarifies this a little bit more. Romans chapter 3, verses 9 through 11. I would write that down because this is a great cross-reference for this particular verse. He tells the Romans, what then? Are we Jews any better off? No, not at all. For we have already charged that all, both Jews and Greeks, are under sin. As it is written, none is righteous. No, not one. No one understands. No one seeks God. Sin is the equalizer. We all have it. This is the starting point for everyone. Therefore, no one is better than the other. Having a right belief about scriptures and traditions, but wrong motives, does not also mean that you are justified. Romans 3 also another great uh, cross-reference, you can write this down. Romans 3, 1 through 3 says this, Then what advantage has a Jew? Or what is the value of circumcision? Much in every way. To begin with, the Jews were entrusted with the oracles of God. What if some were unfaithful? So does their faithlessness nullify the faithfulness of God? 
absolutely not. So it was not contingent. It was not hinged upon whether or not they were good, whether or not they could keep the scriptures and the traditions. It had nothing to do with that. And it was all about the faithfulness of our God. How good is that? Too good to be true, right? How was one though, when we think about this, then we also think about, well, then how can we please God? What does that look like? Let's look at the verse again real quick. <clears throat> In uh, verse 15, the second part says this, or on starting with 16, yet we know that a person is not justified by works of the law, but through faith in who? Jesus Christ. Faith is the key. He is the door. We now have access to be fully accepted by God. We're considered justified, made right, made good before God. This is a part of the good news, y'all. And I love another commentator says this. He says, justification is the gracious act of God by which God declares a sinner righteous. Solely, meaning there's nothing else included, through faith in who? Once again, Jesus Christ. So point number one is this. We are justified by our faith in Jesus Christ. We are justified by our faith in Jesus Christ. Let that sink in for a second, my sisters. Let that reality help you to understand how it is, again, nothing that we can do, not our backgrounds, not what we can bring to the table. We brought nothing to the table. There was no good in us. Our starting point was sin. And yet God met us in our lowest state of sinfulness and chose to die for us and save wretched sinners like us. We are justified by our faith in Jesus Christ. See, justification turns everything upside down. It does not make sense. It doesn't require our ethnicity to please God. And now Paul is saying it doesn't require our works. And in the same context and conversation of what Paul is saying, he said, Peter, you made a distinction. You yourself were accepted by God through your faith in him. And it was nothing about your good works or ethnicity. And now when we all also know really quickly that you didn't deserve it, if it was based off your works, you didn't deserve any of God's goodness and grace. You were very erratic. You were irrational in your behavior. You were impulsive, right? And now you made these other brothers believe that it was the gospel plus something else. So he says, let me remind you again, verse 16b. If we can go back to the scripture really quick. He says, so we have also believed in Christ Jesus in order to be justified by faith in Christ and not by works of the law, because by works of the law, guess what? No one will be justified. So I want us to pause and think about this real quick. It is by grace through faith apart from the works of the law. Keywords, faith and not by works. I want you to circle faith and I want you to underline not by works works period okay and this is why it is not by our works works are not to be included because the glory would go to ourself we would get the credit we would be like yep i did that remember in the first chapter when we talked about like the different uh ways that man try to have salvation or this standard of being good and righteous and we talked about all the ways that we miss the mark still their idea of that has nothing to do with anything that we could do on our end to work towards that. It has everything to do with God. So removing that reminds us that it is not about us. In addition to that, apart from works, removes, removes boasting in ourself. The boasting, again, we live in a culture where we want to boast about everything. We want to put it on social media. We want to shout it from the rooftops when things happen. And yet God is asking us to have this humble heart to be reminded that it was nothing that we could do on our end to earn this beautiful gift of grace that he so freely and lovingly gave each and every one of us. Let me remind you what Ephesians, his letter to the Ephesians tells us in, in chapter two, verses eight and nine. He says, for by grace, you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. Here's it, here's it, hitter, not as a result of work so that no one may boast. Separating it from works allows us to receive it as the, the blessing that it is. Nothing that we can earn or work for because it is a gift of God. Point number two is this. The law cannot justify anyone, period. The law cannot justify anyone, period. Jesus offers justification for everyone who believes. Everyone who believes. 
Romans 6, 22, 23 tells us, but now that you've been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the fruit you get leads to sanctification. Our day, in our daily walk with God, as we submit to him, as we trust him with our heart and our mind and our soul, this is the part that he gets to redeem us every day and to wash us in his blood. And it's end eternal life for the wages of sin is death. We all know this one, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Romans 1 16 says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God for salvation for everyone who believes to the, fir to the Jew first and also the Greek. John 3 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. So for those who have yet to put their faith in Jesus, there's good news. You can do that today. I would encourage you, for those of our sisters joining us at home, like talk to your, talk to your leader. They would love to walk you through those things and help you to understand what these next steps look like. For those of us who have put our faith in Jesus Christ, accepting this new reality, for both those who are on the fence about it and for those of us who are already in Jesus, y'all, it's still hard. It is still hard. It is a daily reminder for us to be reminded that, man, we don't have to do these things, but it's, the, the, it's Jesus Christ living inside of us by his spirit that allows us to walk this out. And in that, even though it's hard, he offers so much freedom, so much help, so much joy, but we have to keep trusting him. So I want to talk about this really quickly in our closing. Um, I love this table. I have found it online and I just kind of summarized it. Um, for those, it's, it's, we're going to email that to you. So hang tight. It's a great uh, breakdown of how the law, what the law says in the Bible versus what grace says in the Bible. Basically this, the law prohibits and grace says you're invited and it gives freely. The law condemns the sinner. Grace redeems the sinner. The law says do. Grace says it is done. The law says continue to be holy. Grace says it is finished. The law curses, but grace blesses. The law slays the sinner. Grace makes the sinner alive. We're going to talk about that in the next couple of weeks. The law condemns the best man, and grace saves the worst man. The law says pay what you owe. Grace says I freely give, I freely forgive you all. The law says the wages of sin is death. Grace says the gift of God is eternal life. The law reveals sin, which is what it was used for, and grace atones for that sin because the law can never do that. By the law is the knowledge of sin. By grace is redemption from sin. The law was given by Moses. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. The law demands obedience. Grace bestows and gives power to obey. The law was written on stone and grace was written on the tablets of the heart. The law was done away in Christ and grace abides forever. The law puts us under bondage and y'all, grace sets us in the liberty of the sons of God. There's freedom, there's freedom, there's freedom. And so the application questions I want us to consider in closing is this. How does my understanding of justification by faith impact my life and daily actions? And, and again, and I'll say this, let me not get ahead of myself, but trusting God on the daily is hard, y'all. Like that, I think, is so real. Trying to get up and wake up when you, you're faced with so many things happening in your life, emails you wake up to, text messages you wake up to, trying to be reminded to, to, to put on the full armor of God so you don't walk around defeated, trying to remind yourself that you can trust God with every moment, that is hard. That's why I think it's good for us to understand this truth because we can rest and what God has done for us and daily trust him to live this out by his spirit. So how does that affect us in our life and daily actions? Number two, how can I better align my thoughts and actions with the truth that we are justified by faith in Jesus Christ? What practices do you need to do better? Do you need to write it out on your mirror in the morning to be reminded? Do you need to put it on your refrigerator? Do you need to put it on the dashboard of your car? What will that look like for you to be confronted with that truth? Because as we're confronted with the hard, we need to have the confrontation of us with God's word so that we can know that we are his and we are accepted. And then lastly, what areas of your life are you struggling to trust God? I think that's all of us, ladies. I think all of us struggle with how we trust God on the daily. But praise God. We can trust him. He is trustworthy. His track record is perfect. So we can bank on the fact that we can keep trusting him in all that we say and do. 
I love you, Grow Family. I love you, sisters, and I hope that this is encouraging to you and your hearts today. Thank you.